Good morning, and welcome into God's house for worship. Looking at the state of the world today, it doesn't take a long look to see that it is filled with wickedness and evil. And when we see all of that surrounding, we can be tempted to want to eliminate it, remove it at all costs. But our Lord Jesus instructs us that this wickedness and evil that we see in the world will remain with us for a long time, all the way up until the very end of the world. And even though this will be the case, we are, as Christians, to continue growing even among the field of wickedness that is in the world. Today, in Jesus' parable, he will instruct us just as to how we do that and what the state of the world will be and what awaits us at the end. We will follow the order of worship of setting two on page 172 of the hymnal, and we'll begin with hymn 918. May God bless our worship this morning. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner.
Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that, ever mindful of your judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is recorded in Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 to 11. We read, This is what the Lord, the King of Israel, Israel's Redeemer, the Lord of armies, says, I am the first, and I am the last. Except for me, there is no God. For who is like me? Let him declare it. Let him recite for me in order the things that took place since the time I established an ancient people. Or let them declare what is yet to come and what is going to take place. Do not tremble and do not be frightened. Did I not announce to you and declare it already long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God except me? There is no other rock. I am not aware of any other. All those who form an idol are good for nothing. All the things which delight them provide no benefit. As for their witnesses, they do not see. They know nothing, so they will be ashamed. Who is this who forms a god or casts a metal image that can provide no profit? Look at him. All his associates will be ashamed. The craftsmen are merely men. Let them all gather themselves and take a stand. They will be terrified and ashamed together. The word of the Lord. We continue with the psalm of the day, Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim His handiwork. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim His handiwork. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. The heavens declare the glory of God the skies proclaim His handiwork. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in Your sight, Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim His handiwork. The second reading is recorded in Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Thus writes St. Paul to the church in Rome, Indeed, God's wrath is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who try to suppress the truth by unrighteousness. This happens because what can be known about God is evident among them because God made it evident among them. In fact, his invisible characteristics, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world because they are understood from the things he made. As a result, People are without excuse, because even though they knew God, they did not honor him or give him thanks as God. Instead, their thinking became nonsense, and their senseless heart was darkened. Although they claim to be wise, they have become fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human, or like birds, four-footed animals, and crawling things. So, as they followed the sinful desires of their hearts, God handed them over to the impurity of degrading their own bodies among themselves. Such people have traded the truth about God for the lie, worshiping and serving the creation rather than the Creator, who is worthy of praise forever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Out of respect for the words and works of Christ, and as you are able, please stand to acclaim the Gospel. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel appointed for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30 and 36 to 43. We read, He presented another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while people were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the plants sprouted and produced heads of grain, the weeds also appeared. The servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where did the weeds come from? He said to them, An enemy did this. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and gather up the weeds? No, he answered, because when you gather up the weeds, you might pull up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, First, gather up the weeds, bind them in bundles, and burn them. Then gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus sent the people away and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered them, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are angels. Therefore, just as the weeds are gathered up and bound and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will pull out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and those who continue to break the law. The angels will throw them into the fiery furnace where where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. 
Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn 491. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My garden once more proves a fortuitous analogy as we examine yet another one of Jesus' parables today. As anyone with a garden knows of the annoyance of weeds. Useless things that only siphon away nutrients that belong to actual crops that produce good food for the eater. When you see weeds, you want to pull them out right away. But it's important to not be too overzealous in your weeding. You might pull out your crops along with them, especially when the crops are still small. I made that mistake a few times this year with my very first garden, and I ended up losing a good chunk of my carrots. You need to pull out the weeds at the right time. Jesus uses the weeds as an analogy for the circumstances and people that Christians will find themselves surrounded by during their lives on earth. A good field of wheat, but with many weeds in the field, 
that won't be removed right away. Jesus intends to give us an answer to the question of what is the source of evil in the world so that Christians know God's plan and what he intends to do about it. Just as in the parable, God instructs us to keep growing even among the weeds. The weeds will be with us until harvest time. But at that harvest, they will be gone forever. This parable about the weeds and the wheat comes in a succession of parables about the kingdom of heaven. Last week, we learned about how the kingdom is bestowed with Jesus' parable of the sower, sowing seeds on different kinds of soil. This parable tells us more about how the kingdom of God operates. This parable, Jesus also speaks of a sower. This man sows good seed in his field, but an enemy of his comes by and sows weeds in his fields. When the wheat springs up, so do the weeds. Realizing that an enemy did this, the sower instructs his servants not to pull out the weeds just yet, because they may pull out the wheat as well. He instructs them to wait until harvest time. Jesus explains that the one who sowed the good seed is himself, the Son of Man, one of the titles that Jesus uses for himself. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, believers. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, the wicked, unbelievers. And the sower of the weeds, the evil one himself, Satan. And that harvest that the sower instructs his servants to wait for, that is the end of the world. Thus, there are a few points that Jesus is making here. What is the cause of evil in the world? Satan and those who follow him in his wicked rebellion against God. Article 19 of the Augsburg Confession states that of the cause of sin, they teach that although God does create and preserve nature, yet the cause of sin is the will of the wicked, that is, of the devil and ungodly men. Which will, unaided of God, turns itself from God, as Christ says in John 8:44, "When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own." God intended to have a weed-free wheat field of pure wheat, but it was Satan, the devil, that introduced the weeds of sin into the world by tempting Adam and Eve to sin with his lies. Sin has plagued this world ever since. But God does not pull up the wicked from the earth, for he will not uproot the righteous along with the wicked before the righteous are ready to be harvested. He, at the end of the world, will separate the wheat from the weeds. It is important for Christians to remember that there will be evil people among us until the very end of the world. And there will be no way to completely separate ourselves from the evils in the world. Any attempt to do so often results in false doctrine. Many have tried to prematurely separate the wheat from the weeds by pharisaical laws, monasticism, and other means. But these often pull up ungrown wheat, destroying the faith of the weak, causing them to fall into sin when they can't meet the impossible demands of completely separating oneself from the world. Or they trample on the faith of the strong by puffing them up with pride, causing them to think that their separation from the world has made them righteous and not their faith in Christ. The weeds will be with us until harvest. We will have to endure evil in the world until the end of the world. But we are not to despair in this. But rather we are to keep growing among the weeds as pure wheat. That is, grow in your faith. Water it with word and sacraments. Live the life of good seed. Jesus says that the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom of heaven. Grow like a good seed and not like a weed. 
Grow steadily and consistently and bring forth a good crop for the harvest of righteousness. A weed grows for nothing, to produce nothing, only to eventually be pulled out and destroyed. A good seed grows to be fruitful. An unbeliever grows only to his eternal destruction. A believer grows to receive the kingdom of his father. And growing strongly even among the weeds may even have the power to change those weeds into wheat. Such is the strength and the, of the seed that the sower planted. Nonetheless, however, it is imperative to keep on growing so that we are ready for the harvest. At the harvest, the weeds will be gone forever. Jesus explains that the harvest, where the servants separate the wheat from the weeds, throw the weeds into the fire, and gather up the wheat into his barn, that that is an analogy, that is an analogy for what will happen at the end of the world. The Son of Man, Jesus, will return and send out his angels, who will uproot everything and every one that causes sin, and the people who continue to break God's law. The angels will send them to their ultimate doom in hell, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Gnashing of teeth is an ancient expression of intense regret. And such will be one of the most prominent emotions for those who will suffer in hell. On the other hand, however, the good wheat that was gathered into the barn are the righteous by faith. They will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Once more, Jesus states his recurring, his recurring statement about his parables, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. The wheat and the weeds have remarkably different fates at the harvest time. Thus it is with those who are righteous by faith in Christ and those who reject faith in favor of wickedness. At harvest, the wicked will be gone forever, cast into the fiery furnace. Until the harvest time, the wheat and the weeds will coexist, but at harvest no longer. This is how it will be with the righteous and the wicked. It may seem that this means that, well, God doesn't really care much for what the wicked do in this world. That telling us to wait for so long until the harvest and just letting the weeds to grow is basically tacit approval of evil. But not so. God is not ambivalent about evil. His mills may grind slowly, but they grind all the same. He is patient even giving the weeds time to change into wheat if they will lay aside their wickedness, turn to him in faith, and go and sin no more. In the end, though, no one will be without excuse. No one will be able to say, well, I didn't know. None will be able to claim ignorance as an excuse for wickedness. As St. Paul says in Romans, God made his characteristics plain. Both his power and his holiness. That he created the universe is obvious by the universe. That he demands perfection is obvious by both the law that he wrote down and the conscience he placed in our hearts. But fools who think themselves wise exchange the creator for created things, worshiping the created things instead of the creator so that they may indulge in their wickedness but their folly will only result in them being found as a wicked weed at the harvest time that willingly chose to reject God. Looking at the field of the world today, it seems to be infested with immensely wicked, wicked weeds. And we see just how much they plague the field of wheat. We may be tempted to rip them out right away, but we must be patient and wait for the appointed time and the appointed reapers. At the harvest time, at the end of the world, Jesus shall return and send out his angels to rip out 
from this earth everything that causes evil. A new earth, free of the weeds of sin, shall then arise. And it shall be free of all of the wickedness, sin, and evil that the wicked cause. And we who are righteous by faith in our Lord, by faith in his perfect life, atoning death and justifying resurrection, we who are watered by the waters of baptism, flowing Jesus' life and death over us, we shall shine like suns in our Father's kingdom when that time comes. Until that harvest time comes, keep growing among the weeds. The weeds will be with us all the way until the harvest time, but they and the evil and the suffering that they cause will then be gone forever. And only perfection and peace will remain in the glorious kingdom of our Father. Until then, we shall pray, even so, Lord Jesus, quickly come. Amen. Please stand. We continue with the confession of faith of all Christians, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the prayer of the church on page 182. Eternal Lord, give us peace as we ponder the news that you forgive our sins. Lead us to see clearly the path you have laid out for us. Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Fill them with a love like yours as they proclaim your grace to us and all people. Guard and guide the families of our congregation. Lead husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Help parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus all their lives. Grant joy to those who are single and make them a blessing to others. Provide wisdom and insight to those who make laws and set policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and to defend those who cannot defend themselves. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and opened the gates of heaven. Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body or mind. Give patience and compassion to all who care for the sick and dying. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. (laughs) 
Gracious God, you govern and direct all things, and you love all people. Hear our prayers, spoken and silent, and answer them in your wisdom and grace. We continue with the offering and the offering hymn. At this time, please take a moment to sign the friendship registers on the insides of the pews so that we may all get to know each other a little better. Please stand. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart that, being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for the closing hymn, hymn 488.
Good morning once again, and thank you all for coming to worship with us today. Special welcome to all of our visitors in attendance today. We hope you all join us together for worship again soon. Uh, just a few things to make note of. Voters meeting next Sunday. Make sure to make some time to come and help us manage our little corner of God's kingdom. Uh, thank you to everyone who helped out with our parade uh, last Sunday. It all went off without a hitch, uh, aside from the wind blowing down our uh, cardboard cutouts a few times. But uh, we managed uh, nonetheless. But thanks to everyone who helped out with that. And then just make a note of the uh, announcements about concerning the weekly communion issue. We have some dates set for when we will have a congregational meeting uh, concerning it to uh, talk about it as a whole congregation. Please make time to, to attend that. I, that's why we're announcing it well in advance. September 10th is when that will take place, and then there will be an official vote on that matter on October 15th. Uh, simply make a note of that in your scheduling. Other than that, God bless the rest of your week, and God bless this wonderful day, too. <laughs>